The Pro-Q4 is here, and a major focus for this update was workflow, trying to find ways to keep the existing workflow and extend it, especially with some of these bigger upgrades. First, now when you hover over the interface, you'll get a little preview of the filter you're gonna add, and it will change the filter that gets added depending on where you click. If there are no bands added to your Pro-Q4, you can now quickly sketch a curve by simply clicking and dragging. This is a general curve just to get the shape of the EQ the way you wanted, and as long as you're still holding the mouse down, you can go back to fix mistakes and forward to add more to the shape. At any time, you can now sketch a new curve by clicking on the new sketch button down in the lower left. Slopes can now be fractional inside of filters. You don't have to stick to the standards like 6, 12, 18 dB per octave. You can now pick strange in the middle values. The linear phase processing under the hood has been improved to increase its precision. When you click on a band and that little pop-up window shows up, you are now able to scroll your mouse wheel over the values to change them. In the lower right hand corner, there are now character options. You can go for clean, subtle, or warm. The difference being one is very transparent, and as you go to warm, it gets more and more tube saturated like. The amount of color introduced will depend on the content that's coming in to the Pro-Q4. Multi-instance support has gotten a massive upgrade. It's now possible to see many instances all at once and to change the settings in other instances from the instance you are currently in. No longer do you have to go find the channel with the EQ that you wanna alter, you can alter it right there. Some DAWs also support handing plugins the track name that they're on and also the color that the track is. And in DAWs that support this, it's gonna show up like this automatically in the Pro-Q4. There are quite a few DAWs that don't support this and steps are being taken to get into contact with those DAWs so that support can be added. From the multi-instance view, you can browse groups, you can see the collisions just like you could in the Pro-Q3, but now it appears here in the multi-instance list. And you can now simply drag and drop a WAV file to do EQ match. It's still possible to EQ match the previous way via the drop down menu as well. The sketch feature is also here. And what this means is if you load the Pro-Q4 as your default EQ across all the channels, you can open up one, sketch out the EQ curve on that, go to the multi-instance view, sketch them out for all the EQs without having to go back and forth between all these different interfaces. You can do it all in just one location and boom, you've got a really basic version of what you want to do. And then you can go in and fine tune each one as you see fit. Dynamics have gotten a big update, a huge update. It is now possible to adjust the attack and release on the bands, something many people have been asking for. But even more so, there is now a spectral mode for the dynamics. In spectral mode, only the frequencies that cross the threshold are the ones that are gonna be turned down. Normally, if one frequency in a band crosses the threshold that you set, all the frequencies in that band get turned down. Now you can set it so that only the ones that cross, those are the only ones that get turned down. And this has all kinds of applications and it tends to sound much more musical in my experience. have a resolution so they don't by default look on the per frequency level because that would be very CPU intensive. Instead, there is a slider that allows you to control sort of how much resolution it should use. That way it doesn't become a CPU hog in your projects. 
So as you slide the slider to have a higher resolution, it will narrow down more and more specifically to different frequencies. And as you give it a broader resolution, it will be less of a CPU hog, but it will sort of, I tend to think of it as like a really intense multi-band compressor in a way that works on small groups of frequencies. As you increase the slider, it goes more and more after singular frequencies. This leads to so many cool things. So one of the coolest things that comes out of this is the side chaining abilities. Now you can simply take out only the frequencies that are overlapping in one signal with another and you only touch the other sound as much as you have to. For example, we have a bass line here that is conflicting with the kick. And I'd like to make the kick side chain to this bass to make room, uh, just to show you that the kick is what's gonna come in here for the side chain. So we can add a band. I'm just gonna click and drag to add a shelving filter, and I'm going to give it a threshold that goes down. Right now, this will respond to the bass. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the dynamics options and engage the sidechain input, so now this will be triggered by the kick. And this is pretty heavy handed, but this is what spectral dynamics allows us to do. Now, we can just go ahead and engage spectral, and just the frequencies that are triggered by the kick on this threshold will be turned down in our bass sound. So we can have a very wide side chain uh, and it will only affect the frequencies that matter. The rest will be left alone and let through. A way tighter sound, way tighter. You can also afford to be quite a bit more aggressive. This might still be a little heavy handed, and I don't think we need such a high spectral density for something like this either. So if we compare, here it is before. And here it is with our spectral dynamic side chain. Here it is with just a regular dynamic side chain although I'd probably set up a dynamic sidechain to primarily target these lower frequencies. So this is a little unfair of a comparison. But that is the magic of what spectral dynamics allows us, is we can have these very wide things and include a lot more in our sidechain, and it will merge a lot more seamlessly. One of the more common use cases for spectral dynamics is to simply go after the resonances in a sound automatically. So here I have a cello that I recorded a while back, and this is just a small piece of it. There is some resonance all over the place on this sound that I would like to clean up. So if you hold Alt and Shift, when you click, it'll add a new dynamic band, and it'll make it spectral by default if you're holding the shift modifier. So now I've added this band, I'd like to make it a bit wider because the low end is where a lot of these issues exist. And I'm just gonna scroll my mouse wheel over it to do so. I'm gonna make this just a little dramatic for the sake of example, but this will grab it quite nicely. All we have left is really to decide our spectral density, but just with this move alone, it now sounds like this. <laughs> So it goes after a lot of those peaks automatically. It responds to them and only removes them when they need to be re removed. So it's a much more elegant solution than just leaving straight cuts. I might go in and add a few cuts here or there on particularly bad cases of resonance, but this is all around just a way better solution. We could try experimenting. If we go down here, I don't think this is what we want for this case because it's gonna really broaden out the curve. <laughs> Instead, I, I do want it to sort of go after individual things. And in general, when you're cutting, it's okay to have this a bit higher. When you're boosting, you may not want this as high because narrow boosts tend to be more audible. In fact, I think I like actually the broader take on what's going on here. Yeah, it goes after those lowest resonances a bit better. But a really common use case for this, and something you'll probably find yourself doing quite often, now baked directly into the bands of the Pro-Q4.
Those are the two most common use cases, side chaining and sort of just taming the peaks out. But there, there are a lot of other options when it comes to using it as a color effect as well. And we're gonna do another video where we'll explore some of these techniques. So stay tuned for that. The spectral dynamics bring with it a processing resolution. Uh, it's down in the lower left next to where the phase selection is, where you pick natural, minimum, or linear phase. Often lower medium resolution is gonna be what you want and it'll work just fine. If a processing resolution is not compatible with the phase mode you've picked, such as picking linear phase mode with maximum resolution, a little warning sign will come up and that just means that it's not gonna process that band because it's not supported. Other little things such as being able to copy band settings between instances is now supported. The dynamic EQ algorithms have been reworked to be more transparent. There's now an all-pass filter. All-pass filters can be helpful for fixing phase-related issues, but they also open up the door to all kinds of cool sound design shenanigans. Volcano 3 is really meant to be the creative effect for this, but it's cool to see that make its way into the Pro-Q4. That's what's new in the Pro-Q4. So let us know down below, was there a feature that you didn't see coming that you're like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't even think of that as a possibility. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.